So I have these two thrift store candlestick holders, which I really liked because they seem pretty solid. It looks like really good wood here in the middle. And then it has these two metal extremities, which I'm going to renovate also, but I think the combination is gonna be really nice for giving these a nice vintage French decor look. They are pretty beaten up, so I have to see if I can fix the rim here. It's a little bent, but we'll work on them and we will transform them. The first thing we're going to do is create some raised stencils using this little stencil that I love. As you can see, it's been used a lot, but it's going to really help give a feminine look to this surface. So I'm just going to get a little bit of the modeling paste on my spatula. Just a little bit. Because I'm working with a really small surface area. And I'm going to hold up the stencil at an angle here and try to wrap it around and see if I can kind of get the area of a pattern over the wood part. And I'm simply going to maneuver my spatula in several directions to try to get a little bit of this paste into the stencil areas. And I'm not worried about it being perfect and I'm not worried about it covering the whole pattern. We're just going to work in small sections here and see what we can do. I'm going to skim to the level almost above the stencil. You don't want a whole lot of paste on there. You just skim it back. And let me see what this does when I pull it off. And it's a little bit elevated, but that's okay. We can sand that down later. I'm going to wipe off my stencil with a paper towel and go around to another area. This is a little bit tedious, but it is fun and it will be really pretty once we get it all on here. So again, I'm going to just try to hold that little pattern area in place over the surface of my candlestick holder. It's very hard to do because it's curved already and I'm working with the stencil. And now I'm skimming back. Remember to skim back your paste. Go slowly, go at your own pace. And then I'm going to pull this off straight towards me. And there we go. I know it doesn't look fancy. I know it looks really messy, but with the technique of paint we're going to use, it's going to, it's going to utilize that mess in a positive way. You will see later, I will show you how we are just looking for elevation with some curvature. That's all we're looking for. We're not looking for a super defined pattern or something perfectly stenciled. That's not the goal here. We are looking for vintage, weathered, all the styles that I use in my tutorials tend to lean that way because that's really the look that I love, especially with French decor, European or European decor. I really like that time-worn look to the pieces. I'm trying to get around this curvature here. I'm pushing down on the stencil and skimming back at the same time. Let's see what this one looks like. Pull it slowly towards you and there we go. So I'm just going to keep doing this all around the parts, some of the parts of this candlestick holder and I'll be back to show you more. So now I have finished applying all my raised stencils. As you can see, I just put a little bit spaced out throughout the surface of this, the middle part of the candlestick holder, just so that visually you can see a little bit of texture all around and on this one also and it doesn't look like much now but you will see it will come together it will really enhance the look that we are going to be creating with the paint so i'm going to let this dry i probably will give it like an hour to dry maybe more and then i will come back and show you how we start applying our painting technique so now the molding paste has dried it's very hard and firm 
I have put some painter's tape to kind of not paint all over the metal, but it doesn't matter because we're going to be covering up this metal anyway. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. I'm taking a piece of sandpaper to just smooth out, just knock off any high points on these, on these raised stencils because it doesn't matter if it's a little bit uneven, but just the high peaks just to soften things up a little bit and just level them out a little bit. It really is just a fast little sanding job. Don't worry too much about making this perfect. Okay, so this looks pretty good now. I think it's a lot more level. Next, I'm going to use some black paint, just some black paint that I've made into chalk paint. And I'm going to start to get some of this debris off. And I'm using this just thick, I think this is a stenciling brush. It's just a coarse bristle brush. And I'm just going to start applying that. Just back and forth over the surface, covering up the wood and the stenciled areas to make it all uniform. Just going around, I am not adding water to this paint like you typically do with chalk paint when you start painting on furniture. I'm just keeping it pretty thick by not diluting it with water, just dry brushing here. I'm not too concerned about the quality of this coat or this coverage because this is going to be underneath another layer of paint another color. So I'm going to show you how pretty we're going to make this by paint layering and also by adding a product that I so love. You may have seen in my other videos called Cracked Patina and it's going to give this an enhanced vintage distressed look. So we're almost done going around this middle part of this candle holder. Chalk paint is great to work with because it really does adhere well, even to something that has a glossy surface like this wood. It had a clear coat on and I didn't even sand it down. I'm just using the paint to create a whole new look. I'm trying to get under here. Make sure you get in all the crevices. If you need water to help move the paint into all your little nooks and crannies, do that by all means. Don't worry so much about this layer being perfect. Remember, just we're slapping it on to get some coverage on there, to get some color on there, and to kind of blend, blend in the texture of these raid stencils. See how they look pretty seamless now. They're starting to hide in the background while creating texture. Okay, I'll be back to show you the next step. Okay, guys, so the black has now dried. It has been about 40 minutes or so, but chalk paint dries really quickly. And it does, you still can see a little bit of the brown underneath, but that's okay. That'll add more character when we paint layer. Now I'm going to start applying Cracked Patina. This is a really cool product to work with, Cracked Patina by Amy Howard, because it really does crack the paint of whatever layer you put on top of your other color. So I'm going to add this Using a brush, I put a little bit on a plate here and I'm just going to apply it with my paintbrush. That's how easy it is. You just apply it like paint, try to get it onto your whole surface. It's going to look wet when it applies and it's going to dry still with a little bit of a sheen, still a little bit wet, but we're going to be covering up this black anyway with our top color, which I'm going to show you in the next step. So just get your Crack Patina product on here. And when it dries, we're going to come back over and apply our paint. And you'll see how the paint will kind of, the what this product does is it, it kind of makes the top coat shrink. I guess it causes the paint to shrink a little and crack. So it'll distress 
exposing some of the black underneath. I'm going to use a white on top, so it's going to look really cool with the black coming through the cracks. Now, on a surface like this, it might not crack so much. It's a, it's a smaller surface, so we'll see how it cracks. Even if it's a little bit here and there, I think it'll still add some really pretty character. Okay, so I think I've gotten it everywhere. And sometimes if I apply too much, it'll start to drip, which you can just tap any drip marks with your paintbrush. But I'm going to leave it like this for now. Just looks like a wet clear coat. That's kind of what it looks like. I'm going to let this dry probably for about 30 minutes, and then I'll come back to show you more. Now the cracked patina has dried, but as you can see, it still looks pretty wet, but it's very dry. So I am going to start applying paint, and what this is going to do is going to start creating texture and a crackling effect, but you have to give it time for that to work. You can also distress it with your paintbrush, and I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm using just a simple, cheap, chippy brush. And the paint color is weathered white. It's kind of an off-white that I use a lot. And I have converted this into chalk paint and I find that that works really nicely with this look. So I'm going to put some on my brush and actually I've discovered that the more coverage you put on, the more it cracks. So I'm just going to apply it over the black and I'm just going to give it a few minutes and see what happens. Meanwhile, I'm going to continue applying in different ways, maybe horizontal, maybe just brushing it a little bit all across this candlestick holder surface. In some places, I'm just going to leave it on a little less Thick. I'm going to continue applying this all around the surface. Like I said, I'm a little heavy with the coverage because that is going to allow the product to work. It's going to shrink that paint. If you don't, I've noticed if you don't have enough paint on there, it doesn't really have enough to work with. But really it's your choice how you want to use this. And I'm going to show you how we're going to come back over and distress certain parts. Right now, I'm just getting the paint on to allow the product to work. Again, this is a very small surface, so it's not going to be as readily visible as if you were applying cracked patina on a door or on a furniture piece that is much bigger and you can see it. A lot of times the cracking only takes place in certain parts so on a small surface like this, it'll just be more minimal. But it's still looking pretty vintage and unique and distressed. So I'm just going to let this sit a little. This is the first part that I painted. And if you can see, the paint is dividing a little bit. It's already starting to crack a little. And you can see down here, and you can see down here where it's starting to crack a little too. So we're just going to let that sit. Look down here, it's starting to crack. It might be hard to see with the camera, but that's what we want to see. And let me show you also something really cool that you can do, and that is you can take your brush and you can, after it's been sitting there a couple minutes, you can just push on the paint and it'll come off, it'll distress. You can do that throughout if you want to bring out some of your under color. See, that's pretty cool. It'll distress it. So if you have several colors underneath, you can bring out all those undertones. I show that in my recent pantry door tutorial where I was distressing over the cracked patina and showing several layers of under colors and it came out beautiful. We're going to continue to work this in some places I'm pushing down. I hope you can see this. And in some places I'm just letting it crack. 
So let me leave that for now. We can always come back over down, down here. I'm gonna add a little bit and up here. See how pretty it's starting to crack here? I don't know if you can see that right there. Okay, gonna work on the other one now. So the white has dried onto the candlestick holders and look how beautiful that looks. Has a lot of texture and I like the black coming through. But I decided to add one more layer of dimension. I'm going to add a top coat of gray. This is Gray by Bear. It's a really pretty rustic gray. So I'm using this small fan brush. I already have some paint on there, but I figured it was thin and small enough to kind of manipulate the paint with the look I'm trying to do. So I just add a little bit of paint to it. And I'm just going to first apply some just sparsely over, just lightly going over the surface. And I'm not going to re-wet my paintbrush for a while. What I'm trying to do is kind of dirty this up. Maybe use some swift, light strokes to really spread out this paint without covering up too much of the white and the black. It's just going to make everything look a little bit more like stone, which I love this faux effect. I love creating this. So I'm just going to apply, dab a little bit more of the gray and go around to this side again being careful to keep the brush the brush strokes light not pushing in too much with my brush just kind of dry brushing over the surface while leaving some of the white and the black underneath exposed this gray is just adding some depth i don't know if you can see that but it's really looking fabulous i really like this extra layer with the hint of the gray it just kind of ages it it makes it look more like, I don't know, like French or European aged stone. A little bit more vintage. I'm gonna get under these parts here. That's why I like using this little brush on such a small surface because you can really manipulate it to get into all these parts. And the bristles are thin, so it's not adding too much of the paint. Already it's looking fabulous. It's looking like really some amazing old stone. So you can see like the black underneath and the white and then the, the gray that has just aged it. And if you feel like you put too much gray over a certain spot and you wanna expose it underneath, you can just come over with your finger and brush it, apply some pressure and it will distress in some parts. You might see some of the paint come off and that'll look really cool. It'll add some even more character. Okay, so that's looking really, really stylish. So you can see here some of the bumps of the raised stencils. That gives this piece a lot more character and a lot more convincing of something that is aged. And I'm going to highlight those in my next step. So I'm going to be back to show you another step here that is going to really ex accentuate the character of this candlestick holder. Okay, so this looks really fabulous. I like how this turned out. What I'm going to do now to bring out some of the raised stencils and some of the character and to also age it a little bit more is I'm going to use these metallic waxes. I haven't seen, I haven't experimented yet with the colors. This is aged brass, this is rose gold, and this is vintage gold. These are all by Art Alchemy, and I love working with these. As you can see, I don't have much left. These have, I got these at least a couple years ago, and they last me a long time. So I'm going to try with various colors by rubbing on my finger a little bit of the wax and just going parallel over the surface to add a little bit of a 
metallic sheen, but really what it's doing with the chalk paint is, is it's kind of rusting it. It's kind of making it look even more aged while bringing out a lot of the elevation in the surface that we created through the stencils. I really like the way the rose gold is looking. I think with the grays and the whites, it complements, it gives it a really nice hue. But you can, of course, pick whatever color you want. So I think I'm going to stick to this one. I mean, I can try, for example, the aged brass on another finger and see what that does. You can always combine different colors of the waxes and that will give you some variation in the aesthetic. So it really is a personal choice. I like the aged brass too. It's adding a really nice stone finish to this as well. Look at that, look how beautiful. Uh, I might hold off on the gold because I think I'm going to stay more in this family of deeper colors and the kind of pinkish tone of the rose gold. So I think that this is going to be really beautiful. Once I enhance the metal parts of this candlestick holder, you're going to see how it all works together. So you're just adding a little bit, just to give it definition, just to create that kind of fake stone look. But really, it looks so real, doesn't it? I just love this. So I'll continue working on these and I'll be back to show you one more step. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the metal parts of my candlestick holders just to refresh the metal on there. And I'm going to use this bronze deco art metallic paint. I really love working with this brand because it dries really nicely. They have beautiful colors and it is also very durable. It holds up really well over metal surfaces. So I'm just going to use a small painting brush and just simply apply it with my paintbrush. Just going to paint it on. And that's all it is. But I might need a couple coats, although it has really good coverage. As you can see, one coat is already kind of hiding this brassy finish underneath and it dries really quickly so even within like 20 minutes i can come back and apply a second coat so i'm just going to work on this and i will be back to show you the final look of these beautiful refinished candlestick holders 